Yesterday we looked at how to realize a feedback controlled voltage controlled current source using a MOS transistor and the idea is to compare the input voltage with another voltage which is the output current times some resistance ok and uh, this comparison is done using the MOS transistor and the output is driven in a way that the error goes to smaller values. So, as usual if uh, g m tends to infinity the error becomes 0 the output current will be exactly equal to the input voltage times this conductance that you have inserted into the circuit ok. The circuit we came up with circuit we derived was this we have the MOS transistor the input source is connected to the gate and we want to have I naught to be some g x times the input voltage V i ok and I naught is whatever flows into the drain and we assume that it goes through some load whatever that is and this I naught flows from the drain to the source and at the source terminal we tap it and connect it to a resistance R x whose value is 1 by G x where G x is the proportionality constant between the output current and input voltage ok and by doing the derivation we saw that I naught is not exactly equal to that how much is that. So, you can again write it as the ideal value times right it is the same expression we got I mean I have rearranged the terms is the usual uh, uh, form for uh, feedback systems where you have some ideal term times loop gain by 1 plus loop gain ok. So, that part is easy enough and as you as with the uh, source follower if g m goes to infinity gate and source are virtually shorted. So, that means that the input voltage appears across R x which is what we wanted ok. So, if the gate and source are virtually shorted the voltage across R x will be the input voltage and the current will be V i divided by R x and that also goes to the output ok. Now, we also evaluated the input and output resistances the input resistance here is obviously infinite because no current flows into the gate and the output resistance here is also infinite because with the input source nulled both the gate and source voltages are 0 which means that this incremental current source becomes an open circuit ok. But in this case I mean we have always done this initially considered the MOS transistor without its output conductance in some cases it uh, makes only a small quantitative difference I mean small difference to the numbers, but in this case it does make a qualitative difference. we do have R d s there what is the output resistance please derive that as you do it yesterday the output resistance is the resistance that the incremental resistance between this point and ground ok with R d s present the input of course is null. So, we are required to find the resistance between incremental resistance between that point and ground as usual you can either connect a voltage source and find the current or uh, connect a current source and find the voltage. How would you choose whether to connect a test voltage or test current does it make does it make a difference and like current clearly it would not make any difference to the answer it had better not ok. The only thing is convenience. So, in general if you have number of branches connected in series it may be better to use a current source because you already know the current through all the branches and similarly if you have a number of things connected in parallel 
you can eliminate some of the variables by connecting a voltage source ok. There is no hard and fast rule, but in this case it turns out it is lot easier to use a current source ok. So, first of all V i is 0, so that means that this is at small signal ground and you connect a current source I test, the simplification that you get is that this what is this current here? What is that current? I test also because it splits in some way we do not know, but it comes back together and it is I test. So, the voltage across this is how much? I test R x and what is this current source value? How much is V g s? minus titus R x. So, this current is G m R x I test flowing upwards ok. So, what is the current in this resistor? I test plus G m R x I test. So, the voltage drop across this is I test plus G m R x I test times R d s and the total voltage is nothing but the sum of this and that ok. So, the total voltage divided by the current will be G m R x R d s plus R x plus R d s ok. Is this fine? So, is there any sanity check you can use for this expression? R d s is R d s is infinity ok, it becomes infinite then yeah that is correct, but uh, if R d s is or uh, some other checks R d s is 0 you get R x obviously that will short circuit or if G m is 0 what should you get R d s plus R x I mean there is no control source there are just two resistances in series. So, some checks that you can use to make sure that whatever you derive is correct. So, now because of R d s I mean this is what I meant by a sort of qualitative change otherwise you get infinity, but clearly it is not infinite you get a finite value, but the dominant term is this ok G m R x R d s and that appears because of feedback ok. So, it is much more than either R x or R d s it appears there because of uh, G m ok and if G m goes to infinity again it goes to infinity even if R d s itself is finite ok. So, that is the interesting stuff about negative feedback you like the R d s could be very small, but as long as G m is infinite you have infinite loop gain and then it will behave like an ideal current source ok. Is this fine? Ok. So, approximately it is G m R x R d s, but you know exactly you will also have R x plus R d s added on to R s ok. Pardon? Uh, what does it mean? Yeah, something like that. It's uh, yeah. I mean, essentially, you are boosting the current that is flowing through the output resistance, and that's why you get a much higher resistance. Okay. It's not exactly the same as the previous case. It's not Miller effect, but uh, there is some effect of the amplifier. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, so here if you did not have this G m the current through this would be I test, but you get a much higher current through R d s because of the feedback. So, that is what boosts up the output resistance ok. So, that is uh, that kind of finishes the small signal analysis of this uh, circuit. Now, if you include R d s in every expression when you have the load for instance you have a load resistance here and if you try to calculate I naught by V i including R d s you can of course do it, but it is uh, the expression turns out to be quite complicated because it will depend on R l and R d s and R x and everything. So, that is why I started with no R d s then I do not have to worry about it at all and the expression for I naught is independent of the load, but with R d s it becomes dependent on the load as well. So, now we understand this uh, small signal wise 
it gives you a voltage controlled current source and that ratio is dependent only on this resistance that is the main advantage of this okay, or primarily on the resistance. It there is uh, there is G m here, but as long as G m is much more than 1 by R x, it is approximately 1 by R x that is the ratio of output current to input voltage okay. and it has a very high input resistance and a very high output resistance also okay. and output resistance see the MOS transistor itself was a voltage controlled current source okay. and this is also a voltage controlled current source, but the output resistance of this can be much much higher than that of a just a MOS transistor okay. is this fine. Do you have some question? Okay. Oh, you can write out the expressions and see. So, let us say this load is some R L, I mean the Kirchhoff's current law equation here will depend on the output voltage, it will be this V s minus V o by R d s that term will come in and V o by R L will be there. So, it will depend on both. It may not be strongly dependent unless R L is infinity, but uh, it will be dependent on dependent on that. Okay. The question is, uh, if you have R L or okay, I derived it without R D S, and then I can short circuit it. I'll derive it. I will get a similar expression. What I said was, if you have R L, the expression for the current expression for I naught by V i will depend on R L is that correct is there some way to see it without deriving the equation could it be independent of R L no will it ever be independent of R L even if R D S why not I mean can you tell me one extreme case where it has to be dependent on R L. What is open circuit? What is RL? What if RL is infinity? How much will be the output current? It has to be zero, right? So clearly, it has to depend on RL, isn't it? If RL is infinity, you have to somehow end up with an expression which will give you a zero answer, right? And if RL is very small, if RL is zero, you get a similar answer to what you had earlier. So it has to depend on RL. Okay. So anyway, that's the voltage controlled current source. And this structure, uh, again, let me put it in a different place. If you just think about a MOS transistor, you use just a MOS transistor, let us say, that is, you apply the input to only a MOS transistor and let us say that the load is a short circuit just for simplicity I do not have to worry about what the load is. Okay. So, here the transconductance which is the ratio of I naught to V i how much is that it is the G m of the MOS transistor okay. and the output conductance or output maybe I will write the output resistance which is the small signal resistance between the output terminals how much is that it is R d s obviously. Okay. So, now All I did to get the voltage control current source was to connect a resistance like that, right? That is my voltage control current source using a MOS transistor with the condition that R x is much greater than 1 by G m. Okay, it is the same as saying G m R x is much more than 1. So, what is the transconductance in this case? What is it? It is uh, G m by 1 plus G m r x or approximately 1 by r x if G m r x is much more than 
1. So, what has happened to the transconductance compared to before? So, let us say that the MOS transistor was operating at the same transconductance in this case and in that case. Okay. In the two cases, the MOS transistor is biased at the same GM. What is the effective uh, I naught by V i in the two cases? Which one is higher? Which one is lower? The first one is higher obviously. Okay. So, the transconductance has the effective transconductance has reduced when you connect a resistance in series with the source between the source and ground and the output resistance what has happened to that? What is the output resistance here? We evaluated just now right what is it? G m G m R d s times R x plus R x plus R d s okay. and this has increased. Okay. This has increased and this has fallen. Okay. And that is a useful thing to have in some cases, I mean, especially the increase in output resistance. So, essentially, this behaves like a much better current source than that one. Okay. That is the idea. Of course, it also gives you a smaller transconductance. And this business of uh, connecting a resistance between the source terminal and ground, okay, this is known as degenerating the MOS transistor or degenerating the GM. Degenerating means I mean it is reducing the effective transconductance and sometimes it is called uh, source degeneration because the resistance is connected between source and ground it degenerates the value of the transconductance. Okay. So, it is just some terminology it means simply means that there is some resistance between source and ground and you know now what it does it increases the effective resistance seen from the drain side. Okay. So, it makes it a better current source. So, you will see this this also is some commonly used terminology in circuits books. Okay. Any questions about the small signal features of the voltage control current source? As usual, we have to combine this with an appropriate uh, biasing arrangement. What should we use? So, we want to bias the MOS transistor using a current source. We have four possible schemes. Which one should we use? Which one? Source feedback, why? So, in this case also the source of the MOS transistor is not connected to ground, right? That one. So, if you choose a bias uh, arrangement where the source is connected to ground, you have to use an inductor to lift it up above from above, I mean uh, isolate it from ground and then connect it wherever you want. It is easier if you start with a bias circuit in which the source of the MOS transistor is not connected to ground. Okay. Well, you can use it from the drain, but need that needs another amplifier for biasing. So, we are also restricting ourselves to cases where we bias the MOS transistor with a current source. Okay. is some load and source feedback bias we have some supply voltage VDD and this is at VG0 I not. Okay. So, we have to combine this biasing picture with that signal picture. Okay. Yeah, we have to the what 
the picture on the right side simply shows how to bias the transistor. We have to fix many things. Okay. First, how do we generate VG zero? How do we bias the resistive divider? Okay, the usual stuff. And how do we connect the input? What is that? AC coupling. Okay, capacitor. Then, how do we connect Rx? Rx has to appear between the source and ground. So again, use the capacitor and connect Rx. How do we connect the load to the drain? So one uh, thing is, I mean, if this load was a sort of floating load. I mean, if it is just a resistor, uh, you could potentially connect it like that. Okay, That is one of the possibilities. Otherwise, if it has to be grounded like that, what do you have to do? Huh? This is the biasing arrangement. Is this okay? You need a you also need to not connect it to the supply. So, you have to use ideally an infinitely large inductance. Okay. So, infinitely large inductance means that point is I mean it is an open circuit for signal frequencies and the incremental drain current from the MOS transistor flows entirely into the load. Okay. So, there are many possibilities I mean it could be that the load itself is connected in series with the drain to the supply voltage that may be possible in some cases. And in uh, in cases where that is not possible, you have to have some element which becomes an open circuit for signal frequencies. That's an inductor of sufficiently large size. What should be the value of the inductor? Let me instead of showing a general impedance, uh, let me show RL. What should be the value of the inductor so that all of the incremental drain current flows into the load resistor? What should it be? What should be the reactance? How should be the reactance of the inductance? So, that all of the current, I mean, nothing should flow into the inductor, right? So, how much should the reactance be so that all of the incremental current flows into RL? Omega L, the reactance of the inductance must be much more than RL. So, much more than what? RL, right? In the incremental picture, what do we get? Let me call this L1. We have the inductance L1 and the resistance RL across it, assuming that the capacitors are short. Then I want all of this current to go into that. So, what should happen if you have a number of parallel elements and you want the current to go into only one of those branches? all the other impedances must be much higher than that particular impedance. In this case, the impedance or the reactance of the inductor must be much more than RL. Okay. So, if you satisfy this condition, then no current flows into that, all of it flows into RL. Okay. Is this fine? So, this is another possibility. And as usual, I mean bulky inductors are best avoided. So, sometimes uh, you make a compromise and not have an inductor here, but have a resistor R D. Okay. What happens in this case? So, you would like to use a very large R D, but uh, is there some limit imposed by that? What happens if you you have to also increase VDD. Okay. When you use an inductor for DC operating point, it makes no difference. It has zero voltage drop across it. Okay, as far as the operating point is concerned. So uh, it doesn't matter how large an inductor you use. The operating point voltage here will be equal to VDD if you use an inductor. But if you use a resistor, the operating point voltage here will be VDD minus drain current times RD. Okay. 
and you have to have that voltage such that the transistor remains in saturation region. So, that means that if you go on increasing R D, you will have to go on increasing the supply voltage as well. Okay. So, it is not likely that you will come up with a value of R D that will make it an open circuit compared to that. Okay. So, instead of L 1 you will have R D and the condition is the same you would like to have R D much more than R L, but the supply voltage restriction probably will not let you have this condition. So, that means that a part of the current will go into R D and part of it will go into R L. Okay. Is this fine? Huh? You want a certain value of G M which is much more than R X. So, let us say you want it to be 20 times more than R X. So, R X is 100 kilo ohms it corresponds to a 10 micro siemen conductance. So, G m has to be let us say 20 times more which means it has to be 200 micro siemens and I naught has to be 200 micro amperes. Okay. This is fine. And I do not think I need to go into the calculations of uh, C 1. C 2 and C 3 just think about it for yourselves and figure out what the constraints must be we have done this enough times. For each one you assume that the others are properly selected and find the resistance across each capacitor. The capacitive reactance must be much smaller than the resistance across the capacitor that is all. Okay. Any questions? What will be the voltage across R L? In this case, when I use R D here, what will be the voltage across R L? Huh? Not operating point, the signal voltage, or the total voltage. G X V I. The incremental current in the drain is approximately G X V I, right? That is the purpose of the circuit. Okay, and what is the voltage here? V naught minus G x times R d parallel R l times V i okay. or minus R d parallel R l divided by R x times V i. Okay. So, again you can see the similarity to the common source amplifier. When you had a common source amplifier, what did you have? Minus G m R d parallel R l right. Now, you have minus 1 by R x times R d parallel R l that is all. All that has happened is it there is there is a reason this is called emitter I mean source degenerated uh, MOS transistor. It behaves very much like the common source amplifier with a reduced value of G m. So, where you had G m earlier you substitute it with G m divided by 1 plus G m R x you get the expressions for this circuit. Okay. Any questions? So, I we discussed this earlier let us say how do you make a current source? You want a current source I naught in this circuit. How do you make that? You have to make it using current mirror. Basically, you need like more transistors to realize that. So, let us say you did not want to spend money on more transistors. What do you have to do? What can you do possibly? You can substitute a resistor in place of the current source. Okay. Now, what resistance will you choose? It depends on the voltage drop here and the voltage drop divided by the uh, current is the resistor. Okay. Let me say that is R naught. Okay, let me do that. What happens to the incremental picture? Does anything change? You will get R x parallel R naught. Okay. So, you will have to modify the value of R x so that the effective uh, transconductance of this will be the same as what you want. Okay. 
Now, a most convenient thing is let us say you choose the bias point such that R naught is R x. Okay. So, then you can get rid of this altogether and you have that circuit that will uh, bias the circuit as well as give you the source degeneration. Okay. So, that is why the source feedback type bias is most popular with discrete circuits. right? So, you can uh, use the same thing for uh, degeneration and biasing and so on. Okay. So, now you have a biasing without using another transistor for a current source. It is not as good as a current source, but uh, uh, if the value of R naught is large, it is okay. And then if you do this, if you choose the value of the, if you choose the bias value such that the biasing resistor and the uh, transconductance setting resistor are the same, then you get a pretty economical circuit. You got rid of one capacitor and current source and all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. But R naught is uh, something that you choose based on the bias values, right? Isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So it's the other way around. You first choose Rx. Okay, that's your specification, and you choose Gm to be much more than one by Rx. Okay. Now, in this circuit, if the value of I naught times R naught becomes very large, then you have to drop a large voltage here and use a large supply. That is there. Pardon? Yeah, it will, but uh, I think you evaluated the sensitivities, right? Uh, in some uh, in the previous tutorial, you tried this versus this, okay, versus voltage bias. This is completely insensitive to the transistor parameters. This is highly sensitive and this is somewhere in the middle. So, exactly the same thing will happen here. It would not be as good as using a proper current source, but it will be better than using a fixed VGS bias. Okay. Which one? So, that is what you have to do it, but then you have to use an inductance in the uh, because the source is not the source is grounded here, right. Yeah, then you have to like open circuit the you can do it like every bias circuit can be combined with any signal picture. So, here the drain is connected to the gate, you have to open circuit that. So, there is, huh? yeah, that is what. So, you have to do all that stuff. So, it is a little more uh, annoying than the other case. Any other questions? So, that kind of completes the voltage controlled current source and you can see it is very closely related to the voltage controlled voltage source. right? The same circuit, if I take the output here, if I consider the source voltage as output, it is a voltage controlled voltage source of gain 1. If I consider the drain current as output, it is a voltage controlled current source. So, if there are no other any other questions about this either the small or large signal behavior. Then we can move on to a current controlled current source and again I will restrict the gain to 1. I will uh, revisit this later why I am doing this. In general a current controlled current source should have an output current which is some k times the input current, but here I am looking only at a current buffer where the output current exactly equals the input current. Okay. Is this fine? So, how would we go about making this? Again, I want to realize this using a MOS transistor. And Yeah, yeah. So, this is my MOS transistor. 
and when I say I have an input current obviously, I have some uh, signal source I I right that is what is when I say I have an input I mean I have an input voltage V I, I have a source V I with some internal resistance perhaps here also I could have some resistance in parallel with this. Okay. So, what I want is the output current to be exactly the same as the input current, how would I go about doing this? Have we solved this problem before? Similar problem? What is that? Current mirror. Yeah. I mean, in general, the business of uh, setting the bias current in the transistor is exactly this, right? So, when we said that we want to bias the transistor at a given current, what did we say? We want the drain current of the MOS transistor to be equal to some given current source. Okay. How is this different? Here it is in the incremental domain. But here again we want to make the current in the MOS transistor either the drain current or source current they are the same equal to the given source. Okay. So, essentially this problem has been solved before. So, that is why I would not spend too much time on it, but you can do it in exactly the same way as before. Okay. So, what is it that we need as usual the MOS transistor. So, you understand I mean uh, when we discuss biasing circuits we uh, said that fixing the VGS of a MOS transistor is not great. So, we have to make the drain current of the MOS transistor equal to some given current source. Okay. Now, here the problem looks very similar. What am I saying? The output current which obviously has to be either the drain current or the source current of the MOS transistor has to be equal to I i which is the given incremental current source. Okay. So, the MOS transistor responds to VGS. Okay. So, somehow I have to make VGS related to what? Some error. What is the error? I naught minus I i or I i minus I naught that is the error. Okay. It does not matter, I could take it in either polarity. And if I naught I minus I i is more than 0, what should happen to the drain current? What should you do to the drain current? it must fall down okay. and what should you do to VGS? It should also decrease right. So, that is exactly what should happen. Now, how do you take this difference I naught minus I i? Just connect them to the same node. So, if you connect I i here, what is the current that tends to flow? there. What is that current? This is basically the drain current I d minus I i okay. and again you can imagine it flowing through a capacitor. If I d minus I i is more than 0, this voltage will go on increasing okay. and it will increase the source voltage. So, that means V g s is reduced and you get exactly what you wanted okay. and in this case the gate voltage is set to 0. Okay. And the same uh, this I d comes out at the drain and you can push it through whatever load you want. Okay. So, this looks exactly like the source feedback bias circuit right, where we connect a bias current source to the source terminal of the MOS transistor. Here we connect the signal current source to the source terminal of the MOS transistor. So, that is all the difference. Okay. And with this minimal circuit, extremely easy to analyze. What is the output current? It has to be equal to I i, there is nothing else in the circuit, the I i cannot go anywhere else. Okay. What is the input resistance seen by the source? How much is it? We have uh, 0, why? We have calculated this before, right? How much is it? 1 by gm. I mean, we have calculated the current looking up into the source of the transistor for a couple of reasons. We calculated the output resistance of the source follower, it is exactly the same, okay. It is the same quantity, same circuit, and everything. And similarly, we also tried to we calculated it when we had to decide the value of the capacitance in the common source amplifier, 
right. So, again I am not going to show the analysis of this the resistance looking up is 1 by g m ok. What is the output resistance? Infinity ok. The output resistance is infinity because if you set the input source to 0 this voltage will be 0 and the current source just drops out ok. And as before we have omitted RDS from the model if I connect RDS what will be the resistance? Till infinity ok, but the input current source is not going to be perfect ok. It has an internal resistance R s, what will be the output resistance of the circuit? Have we solved this before? Some 10 minutes back or 20 minutes back. What is the resistance looking this way? How much is it? It is G m R d s R s plus R d s plus R s ok. Is not it? It is exactly the same as the output resistance of the voltage control current source. Uh, when you are testing for the output resistance the circuit that you have is exactly the same. It is where you apply the input that is different between that circuit and this circuit ok. So, again you can uh, so this one this circuit is not amplifying current it is giving the same the output current is the same as the input current. So, you can ask what use it is you can see this source by itself had an output resistance R s. Now, you get a current source of same value with this output resistance ok. So, that is what a current buffer does right just like a voltage buffer if you have if you drive a voltage buffer with a poor voltage source it will look like the same voltage, but with a better output resistance. Here also you get the same current as the input current, but the output resistance is much higher. So, overall this uh, current source is much better than what you started off with ok. So, that is what a current buffer does. which one yeah that is right it will be slightly different from I i ok. So, in fact again if you have R d s also it is complicated to calculate please calculate what is the output current in this case it should be quite easy to solve. I have an imperfect current source I i in parallel with R s connected to our current control current source what is the output current. How much is it? What is the current that flows out? What is the drain current of the transistor? What is it? Again, solve it for yourself and see, but we know that this current divides into two parts one is this R s the other is whatever is up there and what is the resistance of whatever is up there 1 by g m. So, it just divides between the two that is all. So, the current that flows here will be 1 by g m divided by sorry uh, g m divided by g m plus 1 by R s or g m plus g s ok. So, that is all it is a current divider and you want to get almost all of the current at the output. So, what is the condition? J m R s is much greater than 1 it is actually getting quite tiresome it is the same condition in every circuit right. When you had a source fall over you had to have J m R l much more than 1 when you had a voltage controlled uh, current source you had to have J m R x much more than 1 and here you have to have J m R s much more than 1. This is actually a criterion for choosing G m ok. Typically you will be given the kind of source it has a certain resistance obviously you have to choose a gm that is the transconductance much that is much higher than the output conductance of the source the aim is to make that current source much better you get the same current source value i mean same current value but even with this rds the output resistance of this is much more than rs okay it's boosted up by this factor gm rds gm rds could be several times or even 100 or so so you get a you get the same current source but with a 100 times higher output resistance and that's why you use this common uh, sorry current control current source ok. And these all have names. So, in this case 
gate is grounded. So, the input is between source and gate, the output is be between drain and gate because the gate is grounded. So, this is called a common gate amplifier. Please think about it, we will complete the biasing picture tomorrow.